আমরা কি লাইভে চলে গেলাম ইয়েস ইয়েস Are we live now or are we live now? Yes, we are live. Okay, thank you and uh, welcome everyone. Um, and hope you're all doing well. And um, thanks a lot for joining us from around the world uh, and specifically today, today for this uh, youth advisory session. We will start the session in three minutes. Here in Bangladesh. So, uh, firstly, I would like to introduce myself and the speakers and the esteemed uh, guests for today. Uh, so, my name is Abrar. I'm currently working in the economic and in economic inclusion and justice portfolio here in Oxfam, and uh, leading the enterprise development program uh, in Bangladesh. So, I would start by introducing our very own uh, Ms. Shamima Oshin, who is currently uh, a Shevening scholar, uh, pursuing her master's, uh, and uh, we had the privilege of having her. Uh, throughout Oxfam's wonderful uh, journey. Uh, then we also have uh, Ms. Jolly noor -Hawk. She's currently the Director of Program Development and Learning and Planning International, uh, who was also part of the uh, of the EYW project. Uh, then we have our change enabler, our youth change enabler, as you can see, at Mr. Shahidul Islam. He's currently the President of uh, Shoplashura Youth Organization uh, from Swedish International Development Agency, Embassy of Sweden, we have Ikramul Haq Soil, who is currently working as the National Program Officer, Market Development. And uh, as our very special guest today, uh, we have Mohammed Delwar Hussein, who is representing the government today uh, as the youth from the Youth Deve uh, Development Department. And he has been working for 22 years. So looking forward uh, to speak to him and uh, get, get his insights. So uh, a little bit about our yeah. session today. Um, as, uh, as you all know that the EYW program has been trying to uh, improve employment and uh, em uh, entrepreneurship opportunities uh, throughout uh, uh, this, the, the number of years we have been working in, mostly focusing on young women and men. And uh, specifically for that, in order to make it more and transparent, uh, the youth groups have formed the Youth Advisory Bo uh, Board to improve the socioeconomic um, condition uh, through skills development and uh, creating enabling environment uh, for youth members. Uh, I think uh, saying without further ado, we have got very special uh, experts and uh, from people who will be taking insights from. And without uh, further ado, I would request uh, Ms. Shamima Noshin who has uh, to present her uh, uh, presentation and specifically share some of the insights from the youth advisory business model uh, the impact and outcomes through, uh, through the youth advisory business model and also share some of our insights regarding uh, what could be the next set of plans for the youth, adv youth advisory board. So over to you, Noshnapa. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Aprapai, for your nice introduction on the youth advisory board and the overall project and uh, all the members who are today speaking in this session. So uh, I'm jump to my presentation, trying to share my screen. Uh, let me just uh, get, uh, give a heads up when you can show my screen. Uh, it's still not visible, Oshnaka. I think it's it's no. coming. Shamima, hi. Uh, should be the slide. 
from team pickle jar would you need any assistance would you want me to present yeah i think you can play for me for a minute i think found some difficulties to share okay just just one moment the share button is not working for my end actually Can you see my screen? It's coming. Just one moment. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see it. I think others also can see this. You know? So it looks a little slow. I have uh, started sharing. Can you see my screen? Yes. Thanks, Murli. Uh, please let me know when to switch to the next slide. Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you. And I'm sorry for this inconvenience, um, technical issues. Uh, so let's get into the presentation. So we are here to actually uh, share a brief overview on how Youth Advisory Board, which we shortly called as a uh, YAB, YAB model. Uh, so let me start with the first slide. Muli, can you uh, go to the first slide? Okay, uh, here is the project overview at a glance. I, I'm sure you, some of you already know about this uh, basic um, information of this project, but let me introduce uh, let me uh, share some basic uh, information of Bangladesh implementation part. Uh, so far in uh, five years, we have reached 55,609 youth who are aged from the 15 to 29 years old. And uh, this uh, project has been, your uh, Empire Youth for Project has been uh, implemented in four climate vulnerable areas, two from northern part of Bangladesh and two for southern part of Bangladesh, naming Borishal, Khulna, Rashahi, and wrong so basically this project is uh, uh, aimed to develop the socio-economic conditions of the climate vulnerable areas youth especially focusing on women uh, empowerment and young women and uh, to achieve this we, uh, the project has focused in three building blocks name agency and skills second economic opportunities and enabling environment these three components are so much related to each other so one actually driven to another one through agency and skill the project has been tried to develop inner skill and outer skill of youth so that they can create their agencies to enough them themselves for creating their own economic opportunity and develop the job sector and also push the social norms and social barriers and uh, engage more or most uh, stakeholders to create an enabling environment which towards to youth empowerment and development of the country next slide please so here is the overview of how this YAP model has been functioned and how many members are there uh, and how they are selected. So uh, as uh, this project uh, name uh, over youth in youth empowerment, so from the first day, youth was the core for, of this project. And this group has been uh, developed, focusing on youth demand, what youth need, and how do they want to work. At the first stage, this pro uh, the project partners uh, was the responsible to create this group, and in a wide level. 
Uh, so there is a uh, each uh, in, in each ward there is a nine groups. Based on that group members, their uh, the union advisory board has been formed, and then from the union youth advisory board member represent the district youth advisory board, and the all district advisory youth members has been selected to national youth advisory board. But to form this group, we have been followed the ratio of thirty percent of male and seventy percent of female. As I mentioned about the aim of this project, we are mostly focusing on young women. Who are more drive to the towards the achieving their dreams? So female was the uh, female youth actually the core of this group formation. Uh, so and uh, if I look into the structure, the union youth advisory board actually the core of this structure. Who are merely connect to ward at community level and district level and as well national advisory level. So they are, if I say that they are the mitochondria of this structure, it won't be totally wrong. So actually, they are uh, representing the whole structure in different different level. Uh, next slide, please. So here is the overview how the youth working together as a, a group, as a model, and uh, they focusing on the democratic management. I mean, when the group has been formed, they follow the democratic process. Like uh, when the ward level has been uh, involved, uh, developed, there was a community people, there was the elite people, there was the youth as well, their parents as well. And we have collected their opinion how this group has to, have to be formed. Then the next layer, uh, when the youth advisory board has been formed, there is a voting system who they want to see to represent them in next level uh, and to add, uh, and help them to achieve their dream. So whatever decision was has been made so far in this group, all are taken democratically. And the selection process, eliminating process, the meeting, when they should call by weekly meeting or it should be an annual meeting, this was their decision and after taking the act of their decision they made an activity plan and uh, after the six months and yearly they have they they go for a review and then share with us with partners what they have achieved so far and what needed to be achieved and where they require support from different stakeholders including oxfam partners and local government system so they all the activities has been done democratically and uh, everyone has been involved in this process and may uh, we try to make sure from the very beginning of the project to the end uh, this uh, system has been established and second is uh, inclusive and diversity uh, as I mentioned, that female uh, as the main focus of this uh, group. So we had tried to uh, ensure more female participation, female leadership uh, quality in this uh, through this group uh, activities and group formation. So the, and these uh, uh, these young leaders actually track their demand, their uh, right, their what they want, how they want their demand, and place this to different level where it's required to present. So overall, they try to ensure the presence of uh, each member's active participation for any type of group activities, any type of group decisions, and any kind of movement. So the, uh, and, uh, they are not actually a stick to the one uh, objectives. They had set their objective based on their priority, based on situation demand. So uh, uh, whenever they had need any kind of uh, support from anyone, they went for the, they seek that support and achieve their target. And uh, the third one, the multi-stakeholder engagement. In that part, I uh, and uh, to create an enabling environment and more economic to create more economic opportunities for rural youth, they have engaged lot of uh, multi stakeholders. Where the main stakeholders were the local duty bearers and national duty bearers. And uh, uh, I am very happy to say that they had a strong uh, in these five years. They have created a strong bond with local duty bearers, uh, so that they can ask for any kind of support. With Without any hesitation, so that is the one of the biggest achievement of this project through this uh, YAV model. 
they establish a sustainable connected with local community people and as well as duty bearer so when the project end and the uh, uh, implementation uh, will be stopped because of based on this connection this groups will be sustainable as that we hope so next slide please uh, and here is a uh, some small glance of what uh, uh, youth groups uh, have so far they have uh, did campaign as i say that uh, they always do about the what situation demands what actually they want to do for themselves and community as well and to create an upbuilding environment so based on that they have planned their initiative in this initiative they have focused campaign they responded to disaster as i mentioned that most uh, our working areas was under the uh, climate vulnerable areas so they have a main agenda of uh, their initiatives to respond to a disaster and uh, uh, then awareness raising for creating enabling environment and influencing and networking based on that they have created the good connection with local level government other youth organization and also the informal sector employers and economic initiative they always opt out for a uh, uh, permanent solution how they can improve their life because this improvement actually based on economic empowerment so we as a group they have to, uh, they have moved together to ensure how they can uh, start a, a small business how they can do the group business how they can make their their group sustainable after the project phase out so this initiative together turned into a institution which we call as youth hub so so far there is six youth hub in our four implementing areas and through this youth hub they are actually helping themselves to individual and group business initiative and this platform as also are uh, using as a social uh, social platform and also learning platform for you so overall this after this five year of uh, uh, implementation we can say that through this youth hub youth are uh, remain connected and grounded to the their initiative so far they have been done and more to go in future next slide please uh, so uh, what i say that youth hub is has been the core of this uh, youth groups now this year model actually now uh, uh, based on this youth hub and they are connected to this youth hub uh, and uh, uh, the there is a small picture to see the to explain that how this hub is uh, functioning so there is a different type of business this so they they invested their group savings here they invested their um, uh, time here and also this hub is actually using as a training and learning platform so whatever uh, whatever information they needed uh, to uh, uh, achieve their dream or to empower themselves they come to this hub and ask for support they could be it support this could be any kind of government press release any kind of government announcement any kind of even the vaccination uh, registration process for covid 19 one they have also done this through this hub so we can imagine how this hub can be um, uh, a support system for a youth themselves and as a community as well and it, this also sharing the responsibility together with government uh, system and they are somehow supporting government to ensure the registration system the application uh, how this any kind of job application should be done what kind of service are uh, actually uh, local government are offering for you so they can have this all information through this youth hub and this is one of the backbone for the yab model to be sustained after the project phase out as we think next slide please okay yeah here is the small result of for uh, this uh, youth group so far we have uh, one inti ward level group 20 union advisory board for this uh, four district advisory board actually based on the four implementing areas and uh, based and this four district uh, youth advisory board member representing in one national youth advisory board so the big group um, getting smaller in this national level so and there is a representation from every single child of this 
uh, group or this model. So, so far, 13 youth group has been registered under government regulation, which means they already uh, earned the title of government uh, youth group. And they can, uh, based on this registration, they can go for any kind of support from government, any kind of uh, fundraising uh, activities from government. And uh, whatever uh, support government uh, announced for youth, they can directly ask for that support and ask for that any kind of fund, any kind of assistance because of this registration. And this registration has been provided by the uh, Ministry of Youth and Development. So now uh, already our Rangpur, uh, there are some groups from Rangpur already received this uh, fund from government, uh, which they has been used for livelihood stock rearing development, and which also creating the opportunity, uh, economic opportunity for youth of uh, Rangpur. And also they can encourage other youth to be registered and uh, explore the offer from government for their de development. Next slide, please. Ah, challenges. So everything is uh, comes with some challenges. So we uh, so we have the challenges uh, through our implementing times, and uh, yeah, that will be go on. I can say that. So uh, the main challenges was the social norms and barriers because uh, most of uh, in, uh, most of the family members and parents are uh, encouraged their. Uh, in children to uh, secure a government job but we know this government job market is not easy for everyone and there is a very limited uh, seat for government job uh, and uh, or there is no money monetary value of this kind of youth related uh, event activities so parents were not very much uh, appreciated earlier what are they doing and also this is difficult for women far more uh, different uh, difficult for women as well because uh, uh, women are not uh, bound to do this kind of activity whatever they are doing through this group uh, movement and uh, that has been uh, took a quite long time to change their mindset up through different kind of initiative like family level discussion day observation event campaign event so uh, but uh, still there is some social norms exist which uh, we hoping that uh, someday it will be better for women to be in, 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 in involved themselves in economic activities and parents also uh, encourage their children to uh, focus on sin employment rather, uh, rather than government employment. So uh, there is a weakness in government, uh, local level governments. I won't say that in a, that it's a uh, weakness from local government and because we have very less resource allotted in this sector, I mean youth development sector. So uh, if government wanted to uh, help some uh, rural youth for their development, they can't because they don't have proper uh, guidance, proper allotment and uh, budget in their hand so that they can uh, uh, help any other youth for their development. So this uh, uh, this can be solved in some way. Uh, youth actually initiated to solve this to uh, organize some campaign and budget hearing meetings and uh, share their proposal where they need budget, what kind of trainings they need, and uh, which training has demand at outside market. So and uh, so we are hope. hope that uh, these also be these issues also uh, need to be addressed. We have a, a, a government official with us, and uh, he also can initiate this process. And uh, another problem is migration problem, and we faced it during the pandemic most because uh, there is a huge number of youth who has to drop out from the group activity, search for another work because there was a so many crises during pandemic, before pandemic. So in this uh, financial crisis, family crisis and the early marriages was the responsible for a many, many uh, post, uh, possible youth drop out. So this uh, can also be needed to be addressed uh, in future 
when uh, the infiltrated uh, any project has been developed or uh, something like that so these challenges we have faced we try to sort out some uh, some of those and there is still some challenges which i can want to request it uh, you people who are now working on youth development and willing to work on youth development who can also uh, give a focus on these challenges next slide please yeah so where is a, there is a result there is a uh, challenges so lesson learned is must in this uh, segment uh, so these are uh, in the you know my first uh, slide i said that youth are the core of this model so through this young model youth has been become more empowered they have now their own bank account they know what is their role as an active citizen how to they uh, chase their dream how can be more innovative income generating activities can be initiated so now they are more confident about this, these things the if you uh, uh, there is also youth representative as well if you can ask him you can find out what was their situation uh, 5 years uh, earlier and now what are they are up to do so there is a huge uh, change and that happened because of youth was the center of this model and youth actually drive what they want to do in with their lives so these uh, unique things the uh, make this project and implementation more beautiful and this is the beauty of this project i must say and uh, uh, and another thing that youth are now more proactive now more responsible and they have they know the procedure how they can uh, push themselves in the uh, influencing activities in campaign activities and how they um, uh, how they collaborate with government initiative what is their role how they can approach so these things are uh, now more prominent among the youth who are actually related to this project and especially with this yab model uh, so I think I'm done as there is some photos of youth uh, initiative. Uh, please, Muli, can you see the, see the live slide? So I'm done with my presentation. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I'm and done. I'm requesting for, can I have the AV please okay. after this photo gallery? And uh, one more thing, if you have any question, uh, you can uh, ask after the AB. I think when once you have watched the AB, there are many kind of questions you already get the answer to this AB. But still, you have any answer? I'm there to answer this. Thanks, uh, can we have the AB now? Yes, I will play it just once. Jubo Dukta, Bakir Ganj, Boishal, Bangladesh. আমি একজন সফট স্কিল প্রশিক্ষক গ্রামের 15 থেকে 29 বছর বয়সী যুবদের 3 দিন ব্যাপী জীবন দক্ষতা বিষয়ক প্রশিক্ষণ প্রদান করে থাকি। আমরা পরিবার পর্যায়ে আলোচনা করে থাকি নারীর প্রতি সহিংসতা নারীদের অর্থনৈতিক কাজে অংশগ্রহণ ও সম্পৃক্ততা যৌন প্রজনন স্বাস্থ্য অধিকার এবং অবৈতনিক সেবা যেখানে উপস্থিত থাকে যুবদের অভিভাবকরা আমি 5 দিন ব্যাপী উদ্যোক্তা উন্নয়ন প্রশিক্ষণ গ্রহণ করে থাকি যেখানে ছিল ব্যবসা কি ব্যবসার ধরন মার্কেটিং সোয়ার্ড বিশ্লেষণ ইত্যাদি বিষয়গুলো a বিষয়গুলো সম্পর্কে আমি সুস্পষ্ট ধারণা লাভ করি এবং এই বিষয়গুলো নিয়েই হচ্ছে এখন আমি আমার ব্যবসা পরিচালনা করতেছি বর্তমানে আমার কয়েকটি ব্যবসা চলমান আছে একটি টি স্টল আছে যেটা আমার ভাই দেখাশোনা করে চটের ব্যাগ তৈরি যেটা আমার পরিবারের অন্যান্য সদস্যদের সহযোগিতায় করে থাকি গ্লাসশিপের ব্যবসা আছে যেখানে তিনটি কোম্পানির সাথে আমি চুক্তিবদ্ধ আছি এছাড়াও বাকেরগঞ্জ সদর উপজেলায় একটি লেডিস কর্নার খুলেছি যেখানে নারীদের যাবতীয় পোশাক বিক্রি করে থাকি আমি বিভিন্ন সামাজিক কাজের সাথে নিজেকে সম্পৃক্ত রেখেছি যেমন যৌন হয়রানির বিরুদ্ধে নারী নির্যাতন প্রতিবাদে বাল্যবিবাহ রুখতে এছাড়াও রাস্তা মেরামত বৃক্ষরোপণ রক্তদান সহ বিভিন্ন সচেতনতামূলক উঠান বৈঠক করে থাকি 
এই কাজের স্বীকৃতি স্বরূপ দুই হাজার আঠারো সালে উপজেলা মহিলা বিষয়ক অধিদপ্তর থেকে আমি জয়িতা পুরস্কার পেয়ে থাকি ধন্যবাদ জানাচ্ছি এমপাওয়ার ইউথ ফর ওয়ার্ক প্রকল্প অক্সফার্ম ইন বাংলাদেশ এবং ওয়েব ফাউন্ডেশনকে Abhar bhai, I found that in a chat box that this is a wrong video, as you say, it's not uh, for Yag Mongol. Uh, can you have the right, A.B., to share? I mean, we have time to change. Hello? Abhar, I'll play the right video now. Abhar, can you hear me? I, I can hear you, Shruti. I think yes. I've lost this connection. Sure, and sure. You, you can hear the right AV. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, hello, can you hear me, uh, Morali? Borishal Bangladesh is one of the most popular places. Oxfam Bangladesh is a part of Borishal and Bakir Ganj Upojela's 6th Union Web Foundation has been made by Empower Youth for Work Procolpo. যুবদের ক্ষমতায়নের জন্য এ প্রকল্প পনেরো থেকে উনত্রিশ বছর বয়সের ছেলে মেয়েদের সংগঠিত করেছে যা সত্তর শতাংশ নারী ভাঙ্গা রাস্তা আমরা মেরামত করেছি ভাঙ্গা শাঁকো আমরা মেরামত করেছি যাতে মানুষ খুব সহজেই যাতায়াত করতে পারতেছে দুর্যোগকালীন সময়ে মানুষদেরকে আমরা সতর্ক বার্তা জানিয়ে দিয়েছি তাদেরকে সতর্ক করছি ইউআইডাব্লু প্রকল্পের প্রধান লক্ষ্য সক্ষমতা বৃদ্ধির মাধ্যমে যুবদের আর্থ সামাজিক উন্নয়নের সহযোগিতা করা আমাদের ওয়ার্ডে বা আমাদের ইউনিয়নের প্রত্যেকটা সদস্য যেন সেই ভ্যাকসিনটা নিতে পারে বর্তমান করোনা মহামারীর ভ্যাকসিনাইজেশনের ক্ষেত্রে তারা স্বেচ্ছাসেবক হিসাবে হসপিটাল হয়ে কাজ করছে এবং রেজিস্ট্রেশন করার ক্ষেত্রে তারা আমাদেরকে সহায়তা করছে প্রজেক্ট যখন শুরু হয় তখন আমরা বরপাশা নয়ডা ওয়ার্ড থেকে আমাদের সদস্যদের কমিটি গঠন করি যেখানে আমাদের প্রতি ওয়ার্ডে বিশ জন করে সদস্য নির্বাচন করি সেখান থেকে আমরা প্রতি ওয়ার্ড থেকে দু দুজন করে নির্বাচন করি নয় ওয়ার্ড থেকে আঠেরো জন এবং ওভারঅল নয় ওয়ার্ড থেকে টোটালে দুজন টোটাল বিশ জনের একটি কমিটি গঠন করি কমিটি গঠন করে আমরা বরপাশ ইউনিয়নের বিভিন্ন সামাজিক কার্যক্রম পরিচালনা করতে থাকি ইতিমধ্যে চারটি যুব সংগঠনকে আমরা যুব উন্নয়নের আওতায় এনে তাদেরকে রেজিস্ট্রেশন প্রদান করেছি এই যুব ছেলে ও মেয়েরা আমাদের বিভিন্ন পর্যায়ে যেমন ঘূর্ণিঝড়ের সময় অথবা যে কোনো ধরনের ক্রাইসিসে তারা আমাদের পাশে এসে দাঁড়ায় আমরা বাকেরগঞ্জ উপজেলা প্রশাসনের সমন্বয়ে আমরা স্বপ্নসভা যুব সংগঠনের পক্ষ থেকে দু হাজার তালে বীজ বপন করি তিন দিন ধরে জ্বর আর সাথে কাশি আছে স্যার অর্থনৈতিক উন্নয়নের জন্য তাদের উদ্যোক্তা উন্নয়ন প্রশিক্ষণ দিয়ে তাদের উদ্যোক্তা হিসেবে তৈরি করা হয়েছিল এই প্রকল্পের একটি অন্যতম কাজ তো দক্ষতা উন্নয়নের পাশাপাশি তাদের কর্মসংস্থান তৈরি করা এবং যুবদের সংগঠিত করা হচ্ছিল আমাদের এই ইউআইডব্লু প্রকল্পের অন্যতম একটি লক্ষ্য আমাদের হচ্ছে সাহসের পিছনে আছে ইউআইডব্লু প্রজেক্ট যে আমার এখানে প্রায় দশ থেকে বারো জন যুব কাজ করতে আছে আরও যুবদের জন্য কর্মসংস্থানের চেষ্টা করব যাতে আমার মতো যুবরা আরও এখানে এগিয়ে আসতে পারে আর আমাদের সাথে হচ্ছে মেয়েরা যেন আরও বেশি আসতে পারে বাংলাদেশ 
দক্ষতা উন্নয়ন অর্থনৈতিক কার্যক্রম এবং সামাজিক ক্ষমতায়নের মাধ্যমে বাকেরগঞ্জের তরুণরা এগিয়ে যাচ্ছে সামনের দিকে Thank you. Uh, any questions or any clarification from any of you? Shamima, hi. Uh, Shruti, the side. There's a question for you by Nicolette in the chat section. Maybe you can pick that up. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, Nikita, for your questions. Yeah, uh, the uh, actually this was a uh, project uh, uh, project requirement that 30, 70 percent. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, we've uh, faced a lot of difficulties to ensure the 70 percent of um, uh, women participation because the uh, because of the social norms, uh, it's uh, very difficult to involve themselves uh, in a economic activities or uh, creating agencies. So through that, we have tried to also uh, show community and people and men as well that women, if women have the right opportunity, right kind of nurturing, right kind of training, they also can be uh, all uh, uh, can develop their, themselves, also can contribute in economic uh, growth of their family, and also men men also can do the their uh, role in house what women actually did uh, over the year so far so uh, towards this uh, this ratio we actually want to set an example in the community that uh, sharing of uh, work and uh, respect each other work could uh, uh, could uh, drive us towards a beautiful society and beautiful homely family setup uh, so yeah sometimes it did work and sometimes it didn't uh, work as we all expected but, uh, but uh, different kind of family level discussion and the social norms tools uh, helped us a lot to uh, change mindset of people but yeah still there is uh, need a lots of uh, push uh, to a equal uh, society thank you thanks Thanks a lot, uh, Noshnapa, for your great presentation and um, what a wonderful video it is uh, to see the youths turned up to be a very responsible citizen and uh, have a good working relationship with the local government administrators, uh, which really defines the shift in uh, confidence from the last five years till now, which uh, Noshnapa has uh, mentioned. Uh, and uh, that has happened through this EYW project, through the access to skills, training, and uh, leadership. So thank you so much, Noshnapa, for your effort and the team's effort uh, for that. So now I will be moving on to um, Jolly Appa, uh, who uh, also is uh, known as, uh, as I've learned recently, one of the superstars of Oxfam through her role in Oxfam Bangladesh and uh, I had the privilege to uh, meet her a couple of days earlier and uh, it's, it's, it's really wonderful to know more about how the work started and um, what were and her insights and expertise on the uh, on the youth leadership and her works to and her work towards it towards it uh, so now um, I uh, looking at what Noshinapa had just said why uh, you why the youth advisory board has been formed the impact and the outcomes I'd like to ask you, Jolly Appa, uh, what was your aspiration behind forming the Youth Advisory Board? Uh, and uh, how does it feel uh, to see the results and the impacts uh, uh, from this initiative that you have started or designed in the first phase? Uh, over to you, Jolly Appa.
Joy, are you muted? I think you are muted. We can't hear you. Uh, I can't. Uh, we can't hear you, Jolly Apa. Audience, please give us some seconds. Uh, this is a virtual symposium, so sometimes we are uh, we do face some uh, technical glitches, and um, it's, it's it's very evident that um, Jolly Apa is trying to trying her best uh, to get things up or on work from her end. Um, I think she will be with us very shortly. Jolly, would you like to exit the session and come back again? Yeah, just try that, yeah. yeah. Okay, I think uh, because of the time schedule, we, uh, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to uh, move on to our next session and then maybe we can um, bring on Jolly up when she has the, uh, when, when, when she is back with her audio on. Uh, so now I'll be moving on uh, to, uh, to our youth, uh, who is the man of our moment right now? He can you can say him. He's a, a youth activist, a, a young change enabler of the system, and um, I think uh, he is behind what uh, what we have. We are really going to in terms of the outcomes and the impact. Uh, so, for your reference, uh, I will be asking. Uh, can you hear me now, Abrarpai? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Please go ahead, Julia. Okay, thank God. <laughs> What's happening with all this network and the technology? Um, apologies, everyone. Sorry about that. Um, so what uh, Abrabhai was saying is uh, why we started this Youth Advisory Board. And uh, I would like to start with an answer to your question. Yes, it feels so good when I see all these young people in different stages of their life and they're doing so so many great things. And mm, to be honest, like I was so proud when I was there uh, yesterday when I joined the symposium to see all these changes, these uh, results uh, and the impacts. I, I had a chance to meet lots of uh, potential young people. Even one is sitting right here. So yes, uh, so it feels really good. And, I will go back a little bit at the design phase. Uh, and our first experience of working with young people, having like a youth-led, youth-focused programs and at such a large scale was pretty new for us. And there was an attitude because we were not used to this kind of work, right? And there was an attitude that these are young people. They don't know enough. They're not skilled enough. They don't, uh, I mean, they don't know what's right and what's wrong. And we had an, uh, I would say, practice and attitude to always guide them rather than listening from them. So this whole Youth Advisory Board uh, uh, concept actually came from that very notion that we need to change our practices and we have to make ourselves accountable to the young people that what we are doing it's for them and they have to inform us that what's needed for them rather than we sitting in our offices and designing um, different uh, interventions for them it's not going to work so we have to learn from them and that was the attitude that uh, Empower Youth for Work project team, the whole program team had from the very beginning. So we engaged young people from the very start. So they came in and they told us that this is what we want to see in a youth advisory board. Our main reason for developing this youth advisory board because we wanted to make ourselves accountable to young people, but we couldn't uh, reach like 67,000 young people. Like it was impossible for 15 to 20 people to go door 
go to door uh, to the 67,000 young people and ask them. So we created this mechanism so that young people, they can get together. They, they decide that who would be in the youth advisory board at different layers and what kind of issues they would like to bring in front of us. And we, they also say that it's important that they give us the feedback that the work that we are doing in the communities, whether it's working for them or not, if not, then what should, how we should change our ways of working. And after a year or so, uh, this uh, whole youth advisory, so there was, as, as Notion already um, presented, the different layers of youth advisory. So we brought together at the union level because they had the most reach to these uh, 67,000 young people. And then from there, through a democratic process, they didn't know that, okay, which young people has the capacity to speak in front of our uh, respected government officials at the local level. And from the district advisory board, they also then, uh, you know, funneled that, okay, which young people has the most capacity and skill to speak at the national level and influence and be stand in front of our um, respected ministers and uh, policymakers and the lawmakers and can raise our issues. And that's how the whole structure came into being. But it was not only focused on influencing, it was also focused on um speaking about and changing the mindset that the adults or, or people like professional people will always be informing young people what should be done. So it was the other way around. So rather than top down approach, we actually looked at how to make it bottom up approach. And that's why we introduced this youth advisory board concept and the young people, their participation and the examples that we had over the time as Notion already presented that how it's working, the rural hubs and all these innovative ideas that came from these young people, most of them are the youth advisory, like a lot of them are youth advisory board members. But when we look at the national level youth advisory board member, we can actually see the representation from the very union or ward, like which is the lowest level of administrative um, level, right? Like we can see the reflection of those young people at national level. So that was the main inspiration behind bringing up this whole concept uh, to the project. And I'm really proud to say and really happy to say that I was involved in this whole process and it makes me feel really good um, about how it turned out to be. Over to you, Abraham. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jolyep. It's great to hear your um, insights uh, on the on the Youth Advisory Board. And congrats again, uh, both to you, uh, Motion Apple, and the entire IWAW team for um, coming up with such a great design and plan. And the success stories are amazing uh, to see, uh, specifically to, the, to this video. And uh, now, without further ado, we will be going to the person uh, right now who uh, is none other than Mr. Mohammed Shoydul Stambhai, uh, who has been waiting He's very eager to express his feelings and uh, thoughts. So um, what we are we have specifically done for you uh, is we have told him that we would uh, uh, that he would be able to speak in Bangla so that he can share his experiences just the way he wants to. And then uh, for you, uh, I will be able to translate it as uh, as as soon as he uh, finishes finishes it up. Just to uh, just to uh, keep you uh, in mind, the questions I'm going to ask him is most related to what were his aspirations behind joining the Youth Advisory Board, and becoming the and his journey towards becoming the president of uh, the organization, and um, how does he see the organization in scaling up in the next few years, and uh, his future with the Youth Advisory Board and the uh, uh, and with uh, the organization. So, Shoydul Bhai, amake shunte pachan. जेटा क्या नो आमदर यूआईडब्ल्यू प्रोजेक्ट बा यूथ एडवाइजरी बोर्डे 
আপনাকে জয়েন করার জন্য আপনার কি অ্যাসপিরেশন ছিল বা আপনি কেন এখানে জয়েন করার জন্য আগ্রহ ফিল করেছিলেন এবং আপনি আজকে এই পর্যন্ত যে এসছেন আর আপনি আগে যেটা ছিলেন আপনি কি চেঞ্জ দেখতে পারেন আপনার মধ্যে আর একটা জিনিস যদি আপনি একটু অ্যাড করতে পারেন যে আপনি আজকে এই অর্গানাইজেশনের প্রেসিডেন্টের হয়ে কাজ করছেন আপনি আজকে অর্গানাইজেশনটি কোথায় নিয়ে যেতে চান আর কিভাবে নিয়ে যেতে চান সো আপনি ফিউচারটাকে কিভাবে দেখতে পারছেন যদি এই জিনিসগুলো একটু আপনি একটু সংক্ষেপে বলতে পারেন তাহলে আমি আমাদের অডিয়েন্সকে এটা আবার রিফ্লেক্ট ব্যাক করবো আপনার কাছে আবার আমি মাইকটা দিয়ে দিলাম ধন্যবাদ থ্যাংক ইউ ভাইয়া আই এম শহীদুল ইসলাম প্রেসিডেন্ট স্বপ্ন সহিয়া টন অর্গানাইজেশন ইন বাংলাদেশ আমি ইউআইডব্লিউ প্রজেক্টে প্রথমে তিন দিন একটি সফট স্কিল প্রশিক্ষণ গ্রহণ করি প্রশিক্ষণের ভিতরে এগারোটা অধিবেশনের উপরে আলোচনা করা হয় যেখানে একটা অধিবেশন ছিল নেতৃত্ব ও দল ব্যবস্থাপনা যেটা আমাকে খুব প্রভাবিত করেছে আমি তিন দিন সফট স্কিল ট্রেনিংয়ের পরে আমি চিন্তা করলাম যে আমি কিভাবে নিজেকে একজন ইয়ুথ লিডার হিসেবে তৈরি করতে পারি তারপর আমি প্রথমে ওয়ার্ড গ্রুপের সাথে কাজ শুরু করলাম আমি দীর্ঘদিন ওয়ার্ড গ্রুপে কাজ করার পরে আমি ইউথ অ্যাডভাইজারি বোর্ডের সদস্য হিসেবে নির্বাচিত হলাম সদস্য নির্বাচিত হওয়ার পর আমি কার্যক্রমগুলো শুরু করলাম কিন্তু আমার ভিতরে খুব সংকোচ কাজ করতেছিল যে আমি তা আদৌ পারবো কি না কারণ আমি আমার ইউনিয়ন ইউনিয়ন স্থানীয় সরকার উপজেলা বা আমার সংগঠনের সদস্যদের সাথে নিজেকে মানে দাঁড় করাইতে বা কথা বলতে একটু কনফিউশন ছিলাম পরে যখন আমি কার্যক্রমগুলো শুরু করলাম আস্তে আস্তে দেখছি আমার ভিতর থেকে সেই মানে কনফিউশন দূর হয়ে যাচ্ছে একটা পর্যায়ে আমরা আমরা ডিস্ট্রিক্ট অ্যাডভাইজার বোর্ডের প্রেসিডেন্ট হিসেবে নির্বাচিত হলাম নির্বাচিত হওয়ার পর থেকে আমরা স্থানীয় সরকার উপজেলা পর্যায়ে এবং বিভিন্ন অর্গানাইজেশনের সাথে একত্রিতভাবে আমরা বিভিন্ন কার্যক্রম শুরু করি বিভিন্ন কার্যক্রমের ভিতরে আমরা স্থানীয় সরকার বা উপজেলা পর্যায়ে বিভিন্ন সরকারি কাজে আমরা সরাসরি ইনভলভ ছিলাম এছাড়া আমাদের নিযুদ্ধকে বিভিন্ন কার্যক্রম আমরা পরিচালনা করি যেটা আমাদের সংগঠনকে এখন বর্তমানে আমাদের উপরে স্থানীয় পর্যায়ে যেসব সাধারণ লোকজন স্থানীয় সরকারের লোকজন আছে তাদের একটা আস্থা তৈরি হয় যার কারণে আমরা এখন সংগঠনের ছেলেমেয়েরা যে কোনো জায়গায় গেলে আমাদের নিজস্ব একটা সাংগঠনিক পরিচয় তৈরি হয় এছাড়া আমাদের ভবিষ্যৎ পরিকল্পনা আছে আমাদের এই সংগঠনটিকে আমরা অনেক বড় জায়গায় নিয়ে যাব যাতে করে আমাদের বিভিন্ন জায়গা বিশেষ করে গ্রামীণ যে নারী এবং শিশু বাল্যবিবাহ কিংবা ক্লাইমেটে আমরা কাজ করতে চাচ্ছি যেতে আমাদের আমরা আমাদের বরপাশা ইউনিয়নকে একটি মডেল ইউনিয়ন হিসেবে তৈরি করতে পারি এর পাশাপাশি আমাদের সংগঠন দ্বারা আমাদের উপজেলা অর্থাৎ আমাদের সমস্ত যুবকে একটি অর্থনৈতিক অর্থনৈতিক পরিমণ্ডলের মধ্যে আনতে চাচ্ছি যাতে আমরা চাচ্ছি আমাদের সংগঠনের প্রত্যেকটি ছেলে মেয়ে তারা অর্থনৈতিকভাবে স্বাবলম্বী হবে এটাই আমাদের পরিকল্পনা থ্যাংক ইউ অনেক ধন্যবাদ শরীর ভাই আপনাকে খুব সুন্দর করে আপনি আপনার কাজ এবং আপনার কেন আপনি এসছেন খুব সুন্দর করে বুঝেছেন আমি এখন আমাদের অডিয়েন্সকে একটু রিফ্লেক্ট করবো যে আপনি কি বলেছেন so uh, i think uh, a great honor of applause for shwetul bhai it's, it's it's amazing to see hear him speak um, in a, in a way that uh, has uh, enabled him to do so many works so i'll just summarize it very quickly uh, because we have other speakers and we've got a time schedule to make in as well so what he was trying to say is uh, there are many youths in bangladesh who have been uh, trying to work in several entrepreneurial activities uh, but he does not want to work with one of them but try to be a young leader on his own through his own capacity um so he received some some soft skills training um to the UIW program and tried to become a UIW uh, tried to become a youth leader through it uh, to the program but uh till then he he he, he was not confident enough to face uh, local government uh, officials and relevant stakeholders uh, so after his engagement in different social social and economic activities uh, which uh, Noshinapa mentioned uh, in in the, in the U- that visual board presentation uh he became confident uh so uh, as as time went by he he met with local government administrators uh got positive responses from them now they are uh, he's going to them frequently they they're networking with them they're trying to call him and say uh, and bring him close to them and i think uh what he was also trying to mention is the change in mindset and the confidence which 
the, the, the project has brought in specifically towards uh, leadership, uh, through the leadership skills uh, training, uh, which has led them to uh, work on specific areas like natural disaster, uh, emergency responses, uh, COVID, child marriage, uh, gender issues. Uh, so there are a lot of things they're doing. And uh, I think um, uh, the youth, uh, the, the government youth development uh, works has helped them to uh, generate some really good uh, employment issues and access to finance. Uh, so so the, he also thinks that scaling up the organization um, would also help him um, uh, work towards uh, more income generating activities. Uh, and uh, as, as, as a youth leader, he will try to represent not only in his area, but also replicate this types of work in other areas as well. So uh, I would again like to thank Shoitul Bhai for his, um, for his remarks on this. And uh, I will move forward with uh, our next presenter. Thank you, Shoitul Bhai. Thank you so much for this. So now I'll be uh, moving to um, uh, Ikramul Haq Sohel. Um, uh, so uh, he's a market system expert and has uh, worked in so many diverse areas in the public-private partnership region. Uh, and I would like to uh, know more about his uh, experiences from a donor perspective. Uh, where I mean, uh, what do you think, uh, Sohel Bhai, um, with such you know young innovative uh, people working in this uh, through this youth advisory boards and uh, through this uh, models, they are gaining confidence. To uh, this leadership skills, they're in a, they're, they're 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 creating an enabling environment where they can work with uh, government stakeholders and uh, the ease of access. Uh, it's 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 wonderful to hear. What do you think? Uh, uh, are, are your perspective on this, and how do you think we should approach it in the coming days uh, from a donor's perspective? Uh, if if you can share some of your thoughts, would be great. Thank you. Over to you, Sorvay. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Thank you very much. First of all. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank especially uh, Oxfam Nobit uh, for inviting me uh, for this session. And uh, I'm very glad to actually present here. And, uh, and it seems very in interesting and excellent um, idea, uh, especially for the country like uh, where around 2 million youngsters enter the job market every year. And uh, you know that uh, according to a recent uh, uh, study uh, by World Bank, uh, that is around uh, the employment rate is less than 50 percent across the uh, across the three streams uh, of uh, polytechnics, universities, and college, uh, college. So, this kind of I think uh, initiative is really helpful and uh, is must required. And I I must appreciate uh, actually such initiative. But from a donor perspective, uh, I actually want to raise some issues that and, and, and that might actually help you and the team to actually analyze more uh, to actually uh, approach this kind of idea to the. Uh, to uh, to different donors and uh, so so I so from the donor perspective I will see that uh, the role and uh, value and the impact of this board that gonna create um, among the target group and how this board is going to sustain over time and um, another important point that is uh, is the relevance between uh, the goal and the uh, impact of goal and the objective of this kind of uh, uh, youth advisory boards and donor's priority or the strategy that donor has for a specific country. Like if the donor has a specific focus for the youth empowerment. Uh, so this is this could be an area that uh, that you can definitely uh, approach. And I can say that uh, in, in, in at the Embassy of Sudan, uh, the Swedish Development Corporation definite, is, uh, is definitely uh, working with the youth empowerment. And this is one of the target areas, youth empowerment for, uh, for SIDA uh, around the globe. And, um, and another thing is uh, uh, you might have to actually uh, provide some uh, answer of the questions or concern that uh, that, uh, that the donor might ask uh, for such uh, initiative, like uh, what are the terms of uh, reference of such advisory board and um, uh, as well as the members and what will be their roles and, uh, and, and is there any specific uh, standard operational uh, uh, procedures or SOP for this uh, for this advisory board and who is who is going to manage and control this core function that uh, uh, Shamima Oshina presented about the democracy, um, inclusivity and uh, uh, and multi stakeholder engagement. Who is going to uh, uh, do this uh, on behalf of the advisory board? So 
uh, and who is also uh, going to ensure that this is a democratic process of forming this advisory board uh, and and doing according to the SOP, so Standard Operation Manual. And, uh, and another issue is I would like to raise that uh, what will be the incentive uh, for the youth who, uh, who is a part of this advisory board? So to be sustainable, uh, to make this uh, advisory board uh, uh, to support over the time. So, uh, so a certain level of incentive needs to be created. So either uh, through any private sector or the government. So it would. Uh, it, so how you were basically engaging the uh, Ministry of Youth and uh, Sports within within this initiative, and uh, how they the, how the ministry is going to own this whole uh, advisory boards and how this ministry is going to support over the time to this advisory board, and at the same time uh, we have to ensure uh, uh, that uh, that uh, the, this board is influential enough to create some positive change um, among the youth and at the same time uh, so this board also need to be uh, more engaged so they they they, they need to uh, actually pay more time here so so as they are investing more time so there's some so there's some kind of incentive or there's some kind of support to be arranged for you know, for these advisory board members and uh, finally uh, Another thing that uh, that is to be clear that uh, um, whether this board is conflicting with some other other uh, committee or boards within the within the other ministries or within the same ministries. So so we have to ensure that that there is uh, so no harm is uh, doing to the other other areas. That has to be ensured. And uh, from the donors' perspective, we, have, we actually look these areas that the, whether this board is actually uh, really creating some positive impact. Uh, yeah, that's that's what I wanted to share. And thank you, thank you very much for inviting me. And it's really good, uh, good to hear from you all. And uh, mm, so, yeah, uh, over to you, Abhra. If you have any question, I can ask. I can I can answer. You. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot, well, right? Thanks a lot for your uh, remarks on that. And I think great points came up. Uh, I think uh, uh, specifically talking about SOP and the management of the advisory boards, uh, then government's intervention towards it, and uh, the, the 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 democratic process of how it's going to be formed. There, those are some great insights which we will take into consideration in in our next um, phase of works. Uh, but uh, I think uh, considering the time here right now, I will just move on to uh, our special guest here, uh, our representative from the government, uh, Mr. Delwar Hussain, uh, who, who has been uh, supporting the youth initiative Hello. Uh, hello, Mr. Dilawar. I think uh, Abrar has left the stage. Just give us one minute. I think you should be back in a bit. The youth organizations from uh, from other 17 youth organizations that he is managing, and what are the main initiatives that the government can take for these youths uh, and uh, more actively engage with the uh, local administrators? There was some shot. Apni amar kato shunte bachin. Ji shunte bachi. Abra bhai. Ji ji. Apna ke onik dhunno baad. Ashke amader shete join kora juno. Amra khubi khushi. Apni amader shete join korte pareshen. Uh, I mean, to uh, Amar question a question of the Choliachi Amar Putum Postoloje uh, Apni Apnar uh, Amadeje Youth Organization Gula uh, Ni Apnara Kachporan, Youth uh, Jubun and Kormo Kontate. She can only youth organization Ashen. But EYW projected a youth organization Gula Ashe, Apnara Kano Unadaki select Kulin. Uh, it am our first question. Uh, 
উনাদেরকে কেন সিলেক্ট করলেন এবং উনাদেরকে সিলেক্ট করে কেন রেজিস্ট্রেশন করলেন অন্যদেরকে না কেন এটার একটা পার্ট এবং সেকেন্ড পার্ট হলো আপনারা আপনার এটাকে নিয়ে আমরা আপনারা কি চিন্তা করছেন পরিকল্পনাটা কি এবং আমরা কোন কোন জায়গায় কাজ করলে আমরা উনাদেরকে নিয়ে আরও বড় স্কেলে কাজ করতে পারি যেখানে ধরেন আমরা অক্সফার্ম থেকে আমাদের ইমপ্লিমেন্টিং পার্টনার যারা আছেন লোকাল এনজিওসরা সবাই মিলে আমরা একসাথে কাজ করার সুযোগ হতে পারে আপনার মতামত এখান থেকে শুনতে পেলে খুব ভালো হতো আপনার আমি মাইক দিলাম প্লিজ ধন্যবাদ আবরার ভাই এবং যারা কানেক্টেড আছেন সবাইকে আমার অভিনন্দন এবং শুভেচ্ছা শোনা যাচ্ছে আমার কথা তো যুব উন্নয়ন অধিদপ্তর আসলে বেকার যুব উন্নয়ন অধিদপ্তর আসলে যুবদের নিয়ে কাজ করে আর ইউ আই ডব্লিউ এ প্রকল্পটা যুবদের নিয়ে কাজ করে আসলে আমি আমার কর্মক্ষেত্রে ইউ আই ডব্লিউ প্রোগ্রামের যারা কর্মকর্তা আছেন ওনারা অত্যন্ত আন্তরিকতার সাথে আমার আমার সাথে প্রথমে যোগাযোগ করেন এবং তারা যে যুবদের নিয়ে কাজ করেন এই বিষয়ে আমাকে অবগত করেন আমি সাথে সাথে তাদের যেহেতু আমি যুবদের নিয়ে কাজ করি তাদের আন্তরিকতায় মুগ্ধ হয় এবং প্রতিটি কর্মসূচিতে তাদের অংশগ্রহণ করার চেষ্টা করেছি ইতিপূর্বে এবং ইউ আই ডব্লিউ প্রোগ্রামটা আসলে যুবদেরকে বিভিন্ন ট্রেডে প্রশিক্ষণ দিয়ে তাদেরকে আর্থিক সহযোগিতা দিয়ে সচ্ছলতার চেষ্টা করেছেন সে দিক থেকে আমরা গভর্নমেন্ট যারা জব করি তারা দেখেছি যে আসলে আমাদের সাথে নন গভর্নমেন্ট অর্গানাইজেশন যারা আছে তারা এত আন্তরিকতার সহিত চেষ্টা করে তাদেরকে অবশ্যই আমরা সহযোগিতার হাত বাড়িয়ে দেই এবং প্রত্যেকটা কর্মসূচিতে যাতে সফলতার সহিত তারাও কাজ করতে পারে এবং তাদের আন্তরিকতা মুগ্ধ হয় যেটা অন্যান্য নন গভর্নমেন্ট অর্গানাইজেশন যেগুলো সরকারি কর্মকর্তাদের থেকে একটু দূরত্ব বজায় রাখেন সেখান থেকে আমি একটু আলাদা চোখে দেখি ইউ আই ডব্লিউ প্রোগ্রামটি আসলে আমি এ প্রোগ্রামে যারা সম্পৃক্ত আছেন কর্মকর্তা কর্মচারী প্রত্যেকের আন্তরিকতা ছিল অত্যন্ত ভালো আমি বলবো যে ওনাদের কাজকর্মে মুগ্ধ হয়ে কিন্তু আমাদের যুবদের যারা কাজ করেন তাদেরকে হাত বাড়িয়ে দেয় প্রত্যেকটা কর্মসূচি আমি বিশেষ করে যারা ওনাদের ট্রেনিং প্রোগ্রাম করার পরে যখন ওনারা আর্থিক সহযোগিতা দেন এবং চেক বিতরণ করেন তখন কিন্তু আমাদেরকে ওনারা রাখার চেষ্টা করেছেন আমরা থেকেছি যে স্বচ্ছতার সহিত ওনাদের গুলো কাজগুলো সম্পাদন করেছেন এছাড়া কাজ করে যুবদেরও অত্যন্ত আন্তরিক এবং উদ্যমী এই কারণে মূলত যুবদের সাথেও আমি ব্যক্তিগত ভাবে যোগাযোগ করার চেষ্টা করছি তাদের আগ্রহ দেখে আমি মুগ্ধ হয়েছি যার কারণে ইউ আই ডব্লিউ প্রোগ্রামের আমি সম্ভবত চারটি সংগঠনকে আমি যুব উন্নয়ন অধিদপ্তর থেকে রেজিস্ট্রেশন দিয়েছি এবং এই রেজিস্ট্রেশনগুলো দিয়েছি শুধু আমার হাত থেকে না উপজেলা নির্বাহী অফিসার মহোদয়ের হাত থেকে যাতে ওই যুবরা উৎসাহিত হয় এবং আগ্রহ বাড়ে অবশ্য এই উপজেলা প্রশাসনের সাথে যদি যুবরা আসলে এ বয়সে উপজেলা প্রশাসন কর্মকর্তাদের সাথে আসতে একটু দ্বিধাবোধ করে আমরা চাচ্ছি যে এই দ্বিধাবোধটা দূরত্ব রেখে যেন প্রশাসনের সাথে কাজ করতে পারে যে কোনো মুহূর্তে যেন তারা যোগাযোগ করতে পারে এই কারণে মূলত আমরা আনুষ্ঠানিকভাবে এই রেজিস্ট্রেশনগুলো দিয়েছি এবং সনদপত্রগুলো তাদের হাতে দিয়েছি আর ইউ আই ডব্লিউ প্রোগ্রামটা আসলে আমি আমার কর্মক্ষেত্রে দেখেছি ওরা বিভিন্ন সময় যেমন আমি রিসেন্ট যে প্রোগ্রামটা আমি কথা বলবো যেমন কোভিড উনিশে মানুষ একদম ঘর থেকে বের হয় মানে মানে যারা গ্রামের মানুষ তারা কিন্তু এই কোভিড সম্পর্কে ধারণা ছিল না এই যে যুব সংগঠন ইউডাব্লিউ প্রকল্পের কর্ম সংগঠনের ছেলে মেয়েরা ওরা কিন্তু মাইকিং করে তাদেরকে জানিয়ে দিয়েছে যে কোভিডের সময় তারা যেন মাস্ক ছাড়া বের না হয় ঘর থেকে বের না হয় হ্যান্ড স্যানিটাইজার ইউজ করে এই বিষয়গুলো তারা অত্যন্ত সক্রিয়ভাবে সুষ্ঠুভাবে সরকারের পাশাপাশি থেকে তারা কাজ করেছে আমি আসলে মুগ্ধ তাদের কাজে এবং তারা একটা বিষয় দেখেছি ওরা বাড়ি বাড়ি গিয়ে প্রত্যেকের হ্যান্ড স্যানিটাইজারের পাশাপাশি তারা সাবানও দিয়েছে সাবান দিয়েছে খাবারের চেষ্টা করেছে এমন কি আপনার কোভিড ছাড়া আমি সরকারি পর্যায়ে যেসব কর্মসূচি থাকে যেমন সরকারি পর্যায়ের আপনার বিজিডি বিজিএফ এছাড়া সরকারি ত্রাণ মাননীয় প্রধানমন্ত্রীর যে ঈদ উৎসবে যে আর্থিক সহযোগিতা এই তালিকা তৈরি করতে কিন্তু তারা নিরলসভাবে কাজ করে স্বচ্ছ একটা তালিকা দিয়েছে যেমন বিজেডির সময় আমরা সামাজিক দূরত্ব বজায় রাখার জন্য সরকারের আসলে হ্যান্ড ছোট এই ইউ আই ডব্লিউ প্রকল্পের যারা ছেলেমেরা আছে সংগঠিত ছেলেমেরা আমি বলবো ওদেরকে সংগঠিত ছেলেমেরা ওরা কিন্তু এই বিজিডি বিজেএফ এ 
যাতে সামাজিক দূরত্ব বজায় রেখে এবং সুষ্ঠু সুন্দর পরিচ্ছন্নভাবে সরকারকে সহযোগিতা করে আসছে যেরকম সঠিকভাবে এই কাজগুলো করতে তারা সফল হয়েছে এবং তারা চেষ্টা করেছে এই বিষয়গুলো শুধু আমি না আমার উপজেলায় সকল কর্মকর্তা সহ উপজেলা চেয়ারম্যান মহোদয় উপজেলা ভাইস চেয়ারম্যান বৃন্দ এবং ইউনো মহোদয় সহ জেলা প্রশাসনও কিন্তু এই ইউআইডব্লিউর কর্মসূচি সম্পর্কে অবগত আছেন আমি ব্যক্তিগতভাবে এই ইউআইডব্লিউ প্রকল্পের এই যারা রেজিস্ট্রেশন পেছে তাদেরকে কিন্তু যুব কল্যাণ তহবিলে তো অনুমোদন অনুদান পাওয়ার আমি অনুদানের জন্য অনলাইনে আবেদন করেছি এবং এছাড়াও যুব উন্নয়ন অধিদপ্তর থেকে অনুদানের একটা বিষয় আছে যেটি জেলা প্রশাসক মহোদয়কে ব্যক্তিগতভাবে এই সংগঠনকে আমি জানিয়েছি তারা যে কাজ করে এটা কিন্তু বরিশাল জেলা প্রশাসক মহোদয় ব্যক্তিগতভাবে ওদেরকে চিনে এটাই সফলতা আমি মনে করি ইউআইডব্লিউর প্রকল্পের সার্থকতা এবং সফলতা মনে করি আমি হ্যালো থ্যাংক ইউ থ্যাংক ইউ সো মাচ দেওয়া সাহেব আপনাকে অনেক ধন্যবাদ আমি একটু আপনার কথাগুলো এখন একটু আমার অডিয়েন্সকে আরো কিছু বলবো আর কি আমাকে যদি একটু একটু তাড়াতাড়ি বলতে পারলে শেষ করতে পারলো আমাদের হাতে সময় একটু কম যদি একটু তাড়াতাড়ি শেষ করা যায় থ্যাংক ইউ আপনি আর কিছু বলবেন দেবসাহেব সরি আপনি আর কিছু শেষ করতে চান হ্যাঁ আমি আমি শেয়ার করতে চাচ্ছি কর্মসূচি চালু করেছে আরো অনেক আগে থেকে ওই কর্মসূচিতে আমি নিজে যাওয়ার সুযোগ হয়েছে এবং ওনারা আমাদের আন্তরিক সুদের সেখানে যাওয়ার সুযোগ সৃষ্টি করে দিচ্ছিলেন ওই প্রোগ্রামে কিন্তু আমাদের উপজেলা নির্বাচন হচ্ছে মহোদয় ছিলেন কিন্তু দুর্ভাগ্যজনক হলো সত্য ওই প্রোগ্রামের যাওয়ার কাছাকাছি যাওয়ার আগে জেলা প্রশাসক মহোদয় ইউনো মহোদয়কে ডেকে নিয়েছেন যার কারণে উনি যেতে পারেন নাই কিন্তু আমি গিয়েছিলাম ইউনো মহোদয় আমাকে বলেছে যে আমার প্রতিনিধিত্ব করেন ওখানে তা আমি ওখানে দেখেছি যে আসলে ওরা এই স্বপ্ন ছ যুব সংগঠনের ছেলে মেয়েরা ওই এলাকায় যাদের যে আমি প্রকল্প দেখেছি যে ড্রেস মেকিং এর যে মেয়েটি ওখানে কাজ করে ওই এলাকার ছেলে মেয়েদের আহাবের সাথে যারা জড়িত যারা স্বপ্ন ছ যুব সংগঠনের সাথে জড়িত খুব স্বল্প পরিমাণে টাকা নিয়ে ওদেরকে এই এই জামা কাপড় গুলো তৈরি করে দেয় এটা একটা সার্থকতা দ্বিতীয়ত ওখানে আপনার চিকিৎসা ব্যবস্থা আছে ওদের একটা যেটা প্রাথমিক চিকিৎসা আপনি এলাকার জনগণ ওই গ্রামে একটা রিমোট জায়গায় ওখানে যদি একটু প্রেশারটা বেড়ে যায় ওখানে প্রেশার মেপে দেওয়ার একটা সুযোগ তৈরি করে দিয়েছে আপনার প্রাথমিক চিকিৎসার জন্য প্যারাসিটামল বলেন যে ছোটখাটো ঔষধ জ্বর আসলে যেরকম সেটা ওরা কিন্তু ওখান থেকে ফ্রি ব্যবস্থা করে দেয় আমি এই কাজগুলো দেখে আমি আসলে মুগ্ধ কারণ ভবিষ্যতে যদি এরকম যুব সংগঠন তৈরি করা যায় তাহলে আরো কারণ বাংলাদেশে মোট জনসংখ্যার এক তৃতীয়াংশ যুবক এই যুবকদেরকে ছাড়া কিন্তু দেশের উন্নয়ন কোনোভাবেই সম্ভব না আমরা যদি প্রকল্পের মতো যদি আমি জানি না এই প্রকল্পটি কতদিন আছে আমি মনে করি অক্সফার্ম ইন্টারন্যাশনাল যদি এর আদলে যদি অন্য কোনো কর্মসূচি নিয়ে আসে তাহলে আমি অক্সফার্মকে অক্সফার্ম ইন্টারন্যাশনালকে স্বাগত জানাবো ধন্যবাদ জানাবো কৃতজ্ঞতা জানাবো and um it, and he had so much appreciation for the for for the local partners for oxfam's uh, uiw program staffs for the youths uh, who he thinks are the main vot- motivation for them to get registered because their willingness uh, their their uh, their own wish to succeed uh, has led him to in, to get more motivated in giving th- them the registrations uh, th- he has gone through all the leadership trainings that they have been going through the soft skills training uh, so they all, they they, may, they have a very specific goal uh, they may they are they are doing the social activities and eco- all the economic activities 
that they're maintaining very close uh, 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 communication with the local government uh, administrators and hence uh, not only him uh, higher government officials in the ministry of the youth uh, of, of the youth uh, of the ministry of youth uh, uh, are are no Know about it, they are aware about it, and they uh, and, and they have also expressed their um, gratitude towards the, the the youths working in that area and the youth advisory board. Uh, so, I think uh, it's 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 great to uh, hear from the government officials that uh, they are they were uh, they were so uh, uh, eager to know more about how uh, we are going to replicate this type of works in the next phase of Oxfam's work. Uh, they're very uh, eager to know also that um, if this, if the, such kind of activities can continue uh, in, in in next phases or uh, in in the next phases in other regions as well, it will be a great initiative. What the government has also done is uh, not only they have given the four registrations, uh, but also has secured a couple of funds for the uh, youths in the in the youth advisory board, uh, ranging from. Uh, uh, from uh, 20 to 30 lakhs uh, and uh, for example two to three million uh, uh, which will help them to grow and scale more uh, and also uh, they're also suggesting that we can have a partnership and MOU with the uh, with the with the public uh, with the uh, NGOs uh, so that um, this type of initiatives can work faster and help the youths uh, uh, have some great achievements in, in the future. I think there there are a lot a lot of talks, and I think uh, because of the time, um, I I can't I can't share everything. Uh, what was uh, the, the 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 way he expressed it? Uh, but I think that is it. And thanks again, um, uh, Mr. Mohammad Dalwar Hussain, to be part of this uh, session today. I think uh, well, we are at the end of our session, and um, uh, I think it was a great session with uh, with with great uh, vision. Uh, insights uh, uh, and uh, remarks, new new work, new new um, action plans to be pres uh, to be looked at in the coming days. Uh, so thank you again uh, to all the participants for your patience, here patiently hearing our the, our speakers, okay. our esteemed guests, and um, yeah, and, uh, and thanks again. Uh, quick a uh, screenshot something that can work as a group picture a virtual group picture absolutely, absolutely. Yes. i think all those speakers uh, are, are here except from uh, notion upper but i think we're we good to go yes yeah uh, yes. just a second thank you so much thank you so much for your time and see you guys on the other side thank you thank you again everyone thank you Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye.